across my social media, there's a topic that a couple of people have emailed me, inboxed me about, and that is this ongoing case in Memphis. Because everybody in this area, a lot of us, we got the Amber Alert. And so now we're going to talk about it. And I've just been waiting back, waiting for all the pieces because we just been getting little pieces. But it's obvious it's more to the story. It's something missing from the story. But what I'm going to tell you what we have learned this for, our Tessa did an interview with the custom pastor. By the way, prayers to the custom pastor. Hope you are doing better, feeling better, and you are you continue to get well. And in that video, you, and in that video, she said a whole lot, a whole lot of. Now we can sit here for 45 minutes and break down everything she said, or I can give y'all a rundown. If y'all want me to give y'all a video of a breakdown of every single word she said, let me know. Cause try to round it all up and give it to you. In that video, she was going. He was just basically asking her a bunch of questions or whatever, which she claimed that they were broke up. They, I don't believe that she was broke up. I believe a lot of the rumors, the original rumor that we heard when this first happened before any of you knew about it, because like I said, we're from the area. So we see social media posts long before y'all seen stuff on the news and the social media post said, well, here's what happened. He had a, a wife and two girlfriends and the main girlfriend, which is Artessa got mad, was telling him if he don't, get rid of Danielle and the baby, then they can't be together. And then his main wife was giving him a lot of trouble because she don't care for Artes or or Danielle. And she was giving him trouble. And at first we thought that was, was not the case that, we, we really didn't know what the case was. But Artes confirmed most of that for us in her interview. She let it be known that Zaria had already went and talked to Danielle about having an abortion. She said that they had only, um, Artessa said she and Brandon had only been in relationship for six months and they were currently into it because, or broke up or into it because Danielle, Daniela was supposed to be having an abortion and she showed up mid relationship and said that she wasn't having an abortion. Brandon just didn't want to have any more kids. They've been together six months and she already had had two abortions from him. And he just didn't want any more kids by anybody, period. She even said, and I may have just said that, that Zaria tried to talk to Daniela about having an abortion and talk her into an abortion, which makes sense because Daniela's mother said in her interview with the cousin pastor that Daniela said to her, I'm keeping my baby. And it's because she was being pressured by all of them. When I say all of them, it was Brandon, Zaria, and Artessa to have an abortion. So when you look at this whole situation and you wonder what was really going on, I'm, it's more to the story. A lot of people think Artessa had something to something to do with it but when you put all the pieces together in the story Daniela was the only one that was minding her business she wasn't messing with nobody she wasn't even with Brandon she was ready to raise a baby on her own he came to her she she didn't go to him came to her wanting to be at the hospital when she gave birth and from my understanding he was at the hospital when she gave birth but pretty much well, she was by herself. Well, she wasn't by herself doing her pregnancy. She had her family. She had her mom and she had her family. She had her daughter. And so she wasn't by herself. Anyway, her Daniela's mother said he could have stayed gone like he was. He didn't have to come seek her out and kill her and the baby. I'm with her, with Daniela's mother. Did not. Did, what, go on about your business. You was over there with Zaria and Artessa. You could have kept doing what you was doing. You didn't have to go and do what you did. But anyway, in case y'all don't know, Brandon's birthday was that Tuesday. So this is how he chose, what he chose to do on his birthday. And for his birthday was try to delete a baby mama and his baby. And this is going to haunt him the rest of his life as it should. So when he came out with this guilty, this not guilty, I'm not surprised. Who is surprised? We all knew it was going to be more to the story. So what we waiting on is the rest of the story, Carl. Because our T Tessa 
confirmed she was already mad at Zarya because she was like not letting Brandon see their son and telling Brandon, well, Daniela's baby can't be around my son, blase, blase. And she trying to put that on Zarya, basically said like, had you not been stressing him out with that, maybe he wouldn't have been pushed to do something. So that brings us back to our suspicions or to our first rumor of him being into it with the baby mamas and them pushing to do, pushing him to do it and one of them suggesting it. It, it sounded, you know, it sounded some kind of way right now because they was putting it on Artessa, but is it Artessa we need to be looking at or is it Zaria? Because she didn't try to talk Daniela out of a, an abortion. She didn't care for Artessa. She tolerated Artessa because what, what choice did she have? Brandon was going to be with who Brandon wanted to be with. He didn't want to be with the mama, and she went sign the divorce papers, not up until he did what he did. So on February 3rd, according to the cousin pastor, the documents say she finally signed them, and he had filed January, what, like the 27th. Then that little fact in itself make you wonder, when he filed from divorce from her, what was his intentions? Because it sounds like his intentions was to shake things up so he could be with... Artessa. So then it makes you wonder what stipulations did she put forth on him? Be like, well, you got you gonna do this? Are you gonna do this, Brandon? Are you gonna do this, Brandon? Are you gonna do this, Brandon? Or do this, Brandon? Well, what you gonna do about this, Brandon? Because in order for me to be with you, Brandon, this this is what it sound like. This is exactly what it sound like. So, and the mama confirmed that Brandon and Daniela wasn't even seeing each other anymore. And he, he could have left it like that. Artessa has confirmed none of the baby mamas care for each other. She confirmed she was with Brandon basically the night he was arrested. Now, she claimed she was downtown getting her nails done. And when she got home, he had brought all her favorite make her, her flowers, her card, her makeup gift, everything that he usually bring her to make up with her once they've been into it. And the mama told Artessa that Artessa's mother, I guess I should say, told her that Brandon had in the card that I wanted to watch you enjoy your favorite snacks for the last time, something along those lines. Artessa said she didn't get to see it because all that stuff was taken into police evidence along with her car which the custom pastor has said she has gotten her car back. Her car was taken because that's the car that Brandon, she drove her car over to meet, to take Brandon to meet with Daniela's family and with uh, Brandon's parents to talk about Daniela missing. She said when she went, she didn't know Daniela had already, was already passed away. So their argument on the way over there was he got too much drama going on. I'm not about to be with you. We done. I'm done with this. We not about to be together no more because we. this is just it. I don't want to be in all this drama. whoop de woo So she get over there and all of this drama, she found out what happened to Daniela. She said she's shocked about it. He gets arrested. It brings us to this, that, and the third. People got questions like, did he, was the baby deceased before he threw the baby in the river or did he throw a live baby into the river? E either way, it's horrific and it's absolutely terrible. That river is horrible. I mean, grown people don't go to this river. I have seen um, news reports where people have went down to inspect bridges on the Mississippi River and it was man-sized eating catfish in this river. And on the bottom of this river, it's just old cars, rebar. It's dark down there. There's Once you go down, the, the river is so dark, you cannot see to find your way back up. So if they were diving in this river to even recover a body, they were more than likely tethered to some kind of line, being that once you go down, you cannot see what is up what is left, what is right, and the currents are so strong, they're, they're, the only way to know out would be tethered to a line. So for him to do something that horrific, another question we have are: is are they searching the banks downstream of this river just in case the body does come up? 
And I have talked to somebody that has assisted search and uh, search search and rescue divers before as a rescue diver, assistant rescue diver, and said that being cold, the body may stay down because it's cold. But if the body does come up, it will be on the banks. And then even then you have to worry about wild, wildlife disturbing it, especially since it's so tiny. I don't want to start crying. But again, it's more to this story. Our Tessa has shined a, a lot of light on theories that is kind of make the, making it, the theories come to fruitation. Um, we just wait. Uh, uh, Brandon's attorney said he didn't have an attorney when he was arrested, and the police have a way of coercing you into a guilty verdict. And it's two sides to every a guilty plea, and it's two sides to every story. Well, honey, hurry up and spit out the second side, cause we here for it. And at this point, I hope this this case be on the local news live, because we right in here. I don't want to hear the news rundown of the case i want to see the case live and i hope they have it live so we can hear the details because i want to hear firsthand exactly why he did it and if he had an accomplice and i got a feeling that he finna come out with it and at this point if artessa and zaria hadn't lawyered up they might better because it's more to the story and we finna see what brandon gonna say i don't know if he's still on suicide watch he was on suicide watch don't know if he still is because i hadn't seen the news in the last two days but Stay tuned because we're going to talk about it some more. It's it's a lot more. It's a lot of stuff in the in, Zara, in, in our teacher's interview that we can really dissect. If y'all want me to dissect it, like I said, we can break it down. Because she said a lot of key points in there and contradicted herself a lot in that interview. She said some things. And I'm going to leave the link below for y'all to go watch the interview. And y'all... Send me the questions that y'all want to discuss about the interview. Y'all can send the questions to allthingsnail.com or y'all can go to allthingsnail over on Instagram and DM me and leave the questions there about the interview. If y'all want to talk about it, get in depth about it. But baby, this here, this, this, this something else. 